Hey what's up guys, Alex here, thank you for checking this video and welcome to the episode number 31 of the series of tutorial on how to build a premium theme for WordPress. Welcome again, in this tutorial we're going to take a look on how to create an infinite loading option or an asynchronous loading option for our blog loop. So right now all our blog posts are being printed on the front page because if we access our administration panel in the settings reading, we have specified that we want to display 10 blog posts per page at most in our front index page. So right now we have like seven or eight posts, so everything fits in the first page. But if we downsize this, like we reduce this number to maybe four posts per page, we save changes and we update, we refresh the page, of course, only four posts are gonna be displayed in the front page. And because we didn't code, we didn't specify any source of pagination, there's no way to access other posts that previously published post. The thing that I wanna do in this sunset theme, I don't wanna create a custom or standard pagination where you have like, go to page two or go to older blog post, something like that we have in the standard WordPress themes, but I wanna create a button here to load more, so dynamically load and append previously published blog post underneath this last blog post that has been printed. So let's take a look on how to do it. First of all, let's access our code editor and let's go inside our index.php where are we printing, that is like the blog loop page, the first page where we're printing everything. And inside um, the blog loop, right outside the blog loop, we have to create a button that it's gonna give the users the ability to click and load more posts. So let's uh, create another container outside this one called, of course, div class container and I'm not using the same container of this one where the blog loop is for a really specific reason that I'm gonna explain you later. But here let's use container and let's use just like text center to center align this stuff. Let's use the standard bootstrap uh, attribute bootstrap classes to style a button. So I want a class of button and then button LG to specify large and then I want a button default. I don't want any type of style and let's close this one. Let's create just simple load more. And here we can specify our custom icon that we created. So let's use span class sunset dash sunset I don't remember the name of my custom icon, so let's access the SAS file where we have our base and a font icon and we have sunset loading. Let's close the span tag. Let's save it, let's go back in our front end, let's refresh, if we scroll down, now we have this load more button with the sunset icon that is not actually working. Uh, oops, I forgot to sunset icon, specify the actual class, so let's refresh. Okay, now it's working. Let's create just like to be better, <laughs> visually better. We didn't create the footer yet, but let's create a little bit of padding bottom, padding space to have a little bit of padding and a little bit of breathing room for our footer. So let's access our footer section and let's create a simple HTML5 footer class sunset footer. This is the footer. Uh, let's put just text center, so it's gonna be center align. Let's copy this new class that we just created here. Let's access our sunset.scss. Let's scroll down at the bottom and let's create a new section here by copying this comment. Let's create an extra space and let's call it just footer section. And then the sunset footer is gonna be, for now, I wanna just a background color of like dark gray, 333. And then I wanna give it a padding of 20 pixel top to bottom, but not left and right. And I wanna give it a margin top of 40 pixel, 
and of course I'm gonna have another declaration on display block just in case. Save it, let's go back in our front end, let's refresh, and now we have a little bit of more breathing room here. This is our footer, this is the footer here, the text just completely disappears, but we don't care right now. We created just the footer to have a little bit more space, a little bit more breathing room. So now we have to add an action, a JavaScript action, to this button to recognize when a user clicks on the button and to load the current status of the post. So first of all, we have to remember that to do an Ajax loading, like a dynamic, dynamic loading of new posts, we need to do two different type of codes. First, we need a JavaScript code to handle the user action, and then we need a PHP code, a function, to handle the loading of the blog post and the sending back the result of this loading to the Ajax function that is going to take care of printing everything on the front end. So probably is gonna be a little bit confusing, a little bit complicated, but I'm gonna split this tutorial in two parts so I can deeply explain everything and I can guide you through this process of creating these asynchronous Ajax loading and it's not gonna be confusing. Uh, probably at the end of this first part is gonna be like left halfway through, it's not gonna be fully complete, but we're gonna totally tackle all the remaining stuff in part two. So let's keep going. Let's take care of the first thing. First of all, let's go back in our index.php and we have to specify a bunch of HTML5 data attribute to this button because we have to send a bunch of information to our JavaScript function in order to have a proper loading. So first of all, I want to specify a data page that it's gonna be, the starting value is gonna be page zero. So every time I load, I load new posts, I will dynamically update this number to reflect the page where we are currently. So right now actually it's not zero because WordPress starts from page one. So after I click, I have to update this to page two and basically showing that to the JavaScript function, we are watching page two. So now you have to load page three and so on, so on. So for now, we just need this data attribute value. Let's go back in our file tree and let's access the sunset.js file. Let's create a little bit of space. Let's put a comment here and call it Ajax functions. And let's start coding a little bit of magic. So first of all, we have a super simple jQuery callback to detect the click of an element. So in this case is document dot on, open the brackets, and let's write click as a function that we have to detect and we have to recognize, comma, open single quotes. Here we have to specify the class of the button or whatever element we want to recognize when the click happens. So we have to specify a custom class here. And I notice sometimes developers used to use the standard class. Like for example, if this button is styled with button default, they use button default or they use button as a class. But I always suggest to not use a class for a jQuery or a JavaScript callback function that it's associated to an actual style. So always create a unique class that it's only only used for JavaScript and not for CSS or SAS or for styling. So create a class only for a JavaScript function. This will give you the ability to reuse that same class in other places without carry on also the entire CSS style that could be kind of annoying. So let's call this class simply sunset dash load dash more. That's pretty straightforward, right? So let's copy this custom class, let's paste it here, comma, let's create function, open brackets, curly brackets, and inside the curly brackets, let's put a semicolon at the end of this entire function. So now inside here, we have to collect a bunch of information before uh, calling our Ajax function. So first we have to grab the current page of our blog loop. So let's just write a var to specify that we want to create a new variable in JavaScript. And let's call this variable page that is going to be equal to dollar open the simple brackets this 
that in this case this is gonna refer to the sunset load more and let's crawl this uh, element this HTML element to find the data that we specified before and the data is page so if we simply console log this page variable that we just created oh, maybe it's page let's refresh here let's open the console and let's go inside the console here we have everything activated so we're gonna have jquery triggering so if we click load more we're gonna have a trigger of one inside the console because it's the same information it's the same element that we have inside the data page so this javascript this jquery data function will access whatever custom information we specified here that it at, it's attached to a data HTML attribute. So if you specify data dash sunset, you have to search for a data sunset. In this case, we're using data page that it's equal to one. So we have to specify dot data and inside the brackets and single quote, the name of the HTML5 attribute data that we specify and in this case, page. So let's keep going. Now another really important information that we need is the Ajax URL. So WordPress by default comes with an Ajax URL that you can use. To check where is this Ajax URL, let's uh, go back a little bit inside the our default folder of our entire theme. So in the sunset folder in my case where I have installed the entire WordPress installation. If we go inside the WP admin folder, we open the folder inside here uh, as a second file, we're gonna have the admin dash ajax.php. This is the file that if we access, we probably won't recognize everything and it's kind of confusing, it's kind of small, but we don't have to worry about this file. The only thing that we have to worry about is to point where this file is actually is. So when we create a JavaScript function to call an Ajax function, we have to point the URL to this file. To retrieve this file, that could be tricky sometimes because we don't really know the name of the URL of the website that it's using our theme. So we have to create a custom function to get that specific URL. And WordPress comes with a custom function like that. So let's access back the index.php and let's create another HTML5 uh, data attribute called data URL and equal inside the double quotes let's open the php tags and let's echo a function called admin underscore url open the simple brackets and inside a single quote we have to specify which file in the admin folder we want to refer to we want to retrieve the url in our case is the file admin dash ajax.php the file that we saw before semicolon at the end, let's save it, let's refresh our front end, let's check the button in here inside the data URL, we have this HTTP local.sunset.com that it's my actual URL, and then we have the URL pointing to the file that we need. So now we have this dynamic URL. Of course, we could have simply, because we actually know where this file is, we could have simply manually write the entire address inside here or directly inside the JavaScript function. But it's better not because if we decide to sell or to release this theme for free to be downloaded, to be used, we need a dynamic system of grabbing the current URL because we don't know what the URL of the website is going to be. So this system is pretty good. <laughs> we have this URL and uh, it's gonna dynamically update itself if the website name changes or the URL changes. So now we have these other data attribute that we have to retrieve and let's do it in the same way. So let's duplicate this entire row and let's copy data URL or to be more accurate, let's use the Ajax URL that is the uh, variable that we need to point our JavaScript function to. And in this case, data, it's of course URL. 
Let's save it. Now we can finally create our Ajax call, our Ajax function to call this specific URL. So to create an Ajax function, we have to simply use the dollar sign because we define the dollar sign inside our function initially. Or if you want, you can also write jQuery if you don't want to use the dollar sign. But because we specify the dollar sign as the holder of the jQuery uh, call function, we can use the dollar sign. So dollar dot Ajax. And inside here, let's open the simple brackets and then the curly brackets inside. And let's open this section. Let's of course put a semicolon at the end as usual. So we are not gonna trigger any error. So here, first of all, we have to specify the first value that is the URL where we wanna point this Ajax, this asynchronous dynamic call to. And of course, the first value is called URL space column is not equal, it's column. And here we have to specify the Ajax URL that we want to point and we have this variable. So just paste Ajax URL, comma. Here we have to specify another value that is the page value, but the Ajax function here doesn't have a default page type of data that we can pass. So it's if we use a page and then column page, uh, this is going to trigger an error because Ajax doesn't recognize this page variable. So we have to send this data inside a wrapper, inside a container, a package container of Ajax to send custom data and create whatever we want. So first we have to call data column and inside here let's open the curly brackets again. So basically this data is a sort of array that contains all our custom data that we can write and send to the Ajax function. The first parameter is of course like what I was doing before page. Now we are safe to write a custom value that we want. So page it's equal page because that's the name of the variable that could be confusing but it's not. It's easier maybe to remember. The second variable that I want to pass in this data is the actual action because we are sending this JavaScript to a PHP file and the PHP file in order to be properly triggered needs an action to trigger a specific function. So the action has to be pretty much identical to the function that we want to call. So in this case, let's call sunset underscore load underscore more. That's it. Comma. Let's create a little bit of space here. So it's going to be vertically aligned to your screen. After the comma inside here, still inside the Ajax function, we have two options to return an error or a success. So if we write error, this function, this section, this specific section is going to be triggered if these initial part, the Ajax URL and the sending data to the specific URL is triggering an error. So we can write function, brackets, curly brackets, and let's go back here. And then comma, we can specify another status that we're going to fill up later, of course, it's going to call success. So we have these two type of status and we can write, of course, the function again to specify whatever we want. So the Ajax comes by default with an error callback and a success callback. And Ajax is pretty smart to recognize the output, the whatever output is being returned from uh, PHP to automatically trigger an error or a success. And of course, with PHP, we can force the triggering on an error or on a success. But if something goes wrong, we can print response. To print the response inside the error callback, automatically Ajax puts the error, the actual response. So let's call this variable response. We don't have to define this variable because automatically Ajax is gonna uh, inject this response variable with whatever response we're gonna have from the function. So we can simply console log the response. Uh, you could put an alert if you want, but console log is more subtle, it's just going to be print inside your console, it's not going to stop, it's not going to give the user a trigger any error that he can see. So it's more like for a developer point of view. If we have the success instead, 
we can use the same variable response, but in this case, if we have a success, the response is gonna carry all the data that we are grabbing with the PHP function. In our case, the data are the new posts that we decided to load. So we just simply need to append whatever information inside here. So all the posts inside our container. So let's call this dollar open brackets, and we have to specify a class container where we want to append all our data. To do that, let's create a custom class inside this container to um, have a place to print all our posts. And in this case, the custom class is called sunset-posts-container. Posts is a container. So that's why I created two different containers, and I'm not having this load more button inside the container because now that with JavaScript I'm appending new information to this container, the load button would be before the new posts. And I don't want that. I want the load button always constantly at the bottom and not in between some sort of post loop. So just, it's better like that. You will see, if you try to put the button inside, you will notice that after you append something, it's not gonna be like, the hierarchy is not gonna be good. So let's keep it separated. Let's save this, let's use this new class that we created called sunset posts container. And let's use a jQuery function simply called append to append whatever type of data. So the append is gonna print whatever information we want to pass here in this position, append here, because it's going to append whatever information we want just right before the closing uh, tag of the container, the element that we specify. And of course we have to append just one variable that we have, or well, in our case is the response variable that it's carrying all the blog posts that we have inside. Let's save it. For now, let's leave it like that. This is a pretty bare bone Ajax function that we can customize a lot, but we're gonna see it in, maybe in the next lesson. Now we have to create the PHP function. So let's access back our file tree inside the ink folder. Let's create a new file called ajax.php. And we're creating a new file to keep everything separated, especially the Ajax functions in PHP tend to be, tend to be uh, kind of big and kind of convoluted, complicated, kind of like extend. They, they kind of like a lot of rows, a lot of declarations. So it's always better to maintain your installation as clean as possible and not like having headaches if you have to retrieve your Ajax functions inside the mess of other files. So inside Ajax function, we can keep everything more organized. Of course, let's copy the initial part of this section here. Let's close the footer. We don't need CSS anymore, not even the font icon. Let's open the Ajax, let's paste it here. And let's call this Ajax functions. And here we have to create a two actions. Oh, first of all, let's include this new file inside the functions.php with the get template directory, otherwise it won't work. So let's call it just include ajax.php. We're good to go. Here we have to create two actions and a function. So our function is going to be called exactly like the action we specify in the JavaScript Ajax function. So sunset load more. We want to keep everything consistent, everything easy to remember. We don't have to specify any variable or any attribute so we can open this function safely. Inside here we can have all our load more posts that we're going to see later. But before doing that we have to hook this stuff. We have to hook this Ajax call to this function. So if you remember now we are pointing this Ajax call to the Ajax URL, that is the admin-ajax.php file, we are not pointing this to the ajax.php custom file that we created. So in order to hook this call to our custom file, and in particular to our custom function, we have to use a couple of action of WordPress. So first let's call add underscore action. Let's open the simple brackets. And the first declaration is called wp underscore ajax underscore no 
priv for no privileges underscore and then the function that we want to call so sunset load more and then as a second parameter after the comma again single quote again the name of the function so with this action we are saying to wordpress that we have an ajax call with no privileges so even a user that is not logged can call this sunset load more that it's equal to this custom function that we created we have to duplicate this action again and write the exact same text basically but removing the no privileges in order to uh, activate this action this wp ajax function also for a logged user if you want it, this is a, like a sort of security safety procedure of wordpress if you want this loading more available only for administrator or logged in user so not for non-logged in user you can just simply comment or remove the no privilege action and leave this uh, the standard wp ajax by default this will allow only logged user to use this a specific function but we won't give the ability to use this function to everyone so we have to specify both the standard and the no privileges so always remember everything is connected with underscores also your function name is connected with underscore and then repeat your function name here and now here we can collect a little bit of information and actually grab all the information that our uh, ajax function is sending so because we are using the ajax this uh, by default this function is sending a post type of sending if we want to be more precise and avoid mistake we can specify another built-in value of variable of ajax to specify the type then in this case the type has to be post we want to be post of course and put a comma so the post type is the one that you see in a form if we had a form written here for example form you can specify a method that can be just get or post so the post method is a method that passes all the variables hidden inside the reload of the page or in our case inside the synchronous reload it, the, these variables are not getting printed anywhere the get method is something that prints the variables inside the url so you will see the variables inside the url and the get method is really not safe and it's not really recommended to use but by default a form has always a post method and this method is the same thing that we're specifying here in the ajax function so the type it's actually the method and in this case we are using post because we are using post so we're simulating the form post method we can retrieve all the information that we sent in our case we sent the page and the action but we just really need the page with a simple dollar post php object so let's call this paged that is the actual name of the wordpress query that we're gonna see in a bit it's gonna be equal to dollar underscore post open the square brackets and inside here we have to specify the value that we want to retrieve and we call this value simply page so we have to specify page so now potentially this function is grabbing the current page of our post to check we could simply echo the page and uh, the paged variable and of course this will appear in the front end because we're printing it we're appending it in the container before concluding the function though always remember that a G an ajax function of wordpress always always need a die php function to be called at the end this is really important never leave an ajax function without a die uh, wordpress already have a safety precaution if you forget a die will print a zero appended to whatever result your page is going to have but always put a die at the end of an ajax function this is really important because you need to close that connection you need to shut down that open php ajax connection to your admin um, function to your admin file so a die is really important 
So now we are at on the page. So if we go back in our front end, we refresh, we open the console, but nothing's gonna show up in the console, but we need to check. Actually, let's open the network. In the network section, we have the list of all the files that have been loaded in the generation of this page. So if we click load more, first we're gonna have one because it's the variable, is the parameter that we have inside our button. But if we scroll down, if we check in the network section, we should have, yes, we order by name, we should have a post method to admin ajax.php that we didn't have before. If we open it, we will see that the URL is requesting the ajax with a post. It's returning an okay, so no error has been triggered. And we are sending a bunch of information inside here that we can retrieve inside the parameters section. And the parameters are the action that we're sending with JavaScript and the page that we are sending. So the page is returning the page value that we're sending to um, the PHP function. Just as a test, we can change this value to whatever we want. For example, I wanted this, call this data page. This is awesome. So if we refresh this page and we click load more, it's gonna appear, this is awesome because we are just simply echoing whatever information we want in this page. So let's just leave it one, let's save it. Now let's go back in our Ajax function. Let's remove the echo. Now what we have to do, we have to use the WP query to use this page and load new posts based on this page. That it's gonna be actually plus one because this page, the current page is number one. So we have to go plus one because we want to load the post of page two. Let's make clear. Okay, let's create a new query with dollar query and let's call new WP underscore query. And inside here we can specify an array of value. It's gonna be really small, so I don't need to create uh, custom arguments with an array and put the arguments inside. I can put everything in line. Inside here, I wanna specify the post type, then it's gonna be equal to post. I don't want pages, I don't want anything else. I don't wanna specify the post per pages, so by default, the WP query will grab the post per pages declared in our administration panel. What I want to declare though is the number of page that I need to uh, specify to WordPress to grab those specific posts. So if I write the value paged, page D, and it's actually equal, I missed um, the bigger than sign. Here we can specify the number, then in this case it's going to be two because we grabbed one and we add plus one, so it's going to be two. Let's save it. And now here we can just simply, actually really easily copy this loop, the post loop, but we have to add our custom WP query, our custom new WP query. So let's inject our query variable inside the have post. And if we have post, let's inject the while and the post and let's leave this like that because we want the same effect. We want to load all the template parts that match the post that we're loading. So we're going to have the same result as the home page. And right before the die, we have to always specify the WP underscore reset post data because we are updating the WP query post data. So in order to not create any weird issues, we have to reset the post data every time. Let's save it. Let's go back in our front end. Let's close this. Let's refresh and see if we broke something. So load more. Boom. What happened? We just loaded the gallery post format. We just loaded the video post title, audio post title, image post title. So we loaded previously loaded posts. And just to check if we want to just mm, prove that we did. So uh, we actually loaded four new posts. So if I put now eight, I should be able to see these eight posts. So let's say refresh. 
Now I'm seeing these eight posts, so the last one is image title. To test again, let's say that the first two are the aside and gallery, and the second is the link post format and the quote post format. So if I put two posts per page, I refresh here. Now I have just the aside and gallery. If I click load more, I should get only the link and the quote. Load more, perfect. Link post format and quote post format. This is great. Of course, we have a bunch of issues. First, if we click load more, it's gonna load again the same post because in this data attribute, the data attribute is still just one. So let's do a simple thing. Every time we load, this should increase of one. So we're not in page one anymore, we are in page two. So let's do that with JavaScript and it's gonna be really simple. So first of all, let's do this only inside the success callback function. So only if we are actually printing our post and everything went smoothly and worked, we can update the page count. To update the page count, let's first create a new variable just right before page and let's call var new page and let's call the page variable plus plus and semicolon at the end to add just one. And now we can update this data attribute, uh, its value with this new variable, but we cannot actually do it because if we write this page stuff here, we have to refer to the sunset load more, the, the actual button that we clicked. We cannot use this because this is gonna refer this time to the success function because we're inside the success function. We are not anymore directly underneath this class. So in order to maintain the parent class of this button, we have to declare another variable to carry on that this container. So in this case, let's use var that. It's sometimes if you notice in other code, you will notice this var that that declares only to be this this dollar this. So inside that, it's going to be stored the sunset load more or whatever button you're actually clicking. So you can use this debt variable to replace all this var or this jQuery declaration. And the location of this debt variable is not going to be affected or the pointing of this variable to the sunset load more button is going to be is not going to be affected by the location of where you call it because this variable is declared at the beginning. So even if you call it inside the success function, it's not going to be affected. To update this data value, you have to just simply put inside the brackets, comma, and then put the new value that you want here. That if you want, you can specify like manually five. So this data page is going to be updated to five, but we want to be dynamic. So we're going to specify the new page. Save it. Let's go back here. Let's refresh. So now we have the first two. Let's load more. We have, oh, it's skipping to, mm, it's skipping the first, um, it's skipping two blog posts. So let's check our JavaScript code if we did something wrong here. Oh, sorry guys, um, don't use this plus plus. <laughs> I always do this mistake. So if you use plus plus, this plus plus is gonna increase the page number of one. Instead, we have to use just plus one. I always uh, mismatch these with PHP. Mm, I shouldn't do that. So let's save it. Let's refresh back. Let's go back here. Let's load more. And now we have the link and the a quote post format. If we inspect the element of the button, the data page is still one even if we update it. If we click load more, we're gonna not load anymore the same post, but we're gonna load the next two posts. So we are on page three. If we load more, we are on page four. If we load more, we have the standard post title. Of course, if we load more, nothing happens because we finished all the posts that we had before. Of course, if you expect the element, the data page is always one because the uh, data attribute doesn't get updated inside the inspector dynamically, but it actually works because we are loading previous posts. We are not loading the same post. So this code is working even if your console is not showing it, but it, this is an issue of the console that the data attribute is not 
dynamically updated and you cannot see it, but it's actually working because it's loading dynamically our post. So in the next lesson, we're gonna take care of all the weird stuff that we have to take care of when we do an Ajax call. So first of all, we have to change the URL. Every time we load more something, we have to change these to maybe page two, page three, page four. So we have to update the URL based on the location where we are. Then we have to create a little bit of animation, a little bit of interaction for our users because this is really ugly. If we click load more, boom, it just jumps directly to wherever post is loading. If we load more here, we don't even see that new posts have been loaded. So we have to create a nice smooth transition. We have to create maybe a loading animation when the user clicks the button, always give the user a response, always give a feedback of a user action. Never leave the user waiting because if the connection is super slow, it's gonna take a while to load. So we have to create a little bit of JavaScript magic and CSS magic. And the last thing, but not the least one, if we reach the end of our post, we should hide this load more. We cannot leave it clickable and not working. Looks like it's broken, but actually is there are no more posts to load. So we should specify this one. And we're gonna take care of all this styling thing in the next lesson. We're gonna also improve a little bit our PHP functions to retrieve better information and maybe have a little bit cleanup. We're gonna improve our Ajax function. We're gonna improve our CSS. So the next lesson is gonna be really awesome. So it's pretty much it for this lesson. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. And if you have a couple of minutes, as usual, please take a look at the support me page on my website where you can find all different ways to support me, support my channel and help me to do better videos and better tutorials for you. Thank you again, guys. And as usual, until the next lesson, happy coding.